The following podcast may contain some adult language. You've been warned. Those of you who got an invite, welcome to Nerd Prom. <laughs> no matter where in the world you are, we're all Nerds International with the hyphen. Welcome to Finding the Narrative, a Genesis RPG podcast. This is a show dedicated to the Genesis role-playing system from Fantasy Flight Games, a show in which we, your hosts, discuss all things Genesis from both a player's and a GM's perspective. I am Tony Fanning, and with me as always is my good friend and co-host, Chris Holmes. How you doing, homie? I'm doing pretty good, man. I am doing pretty good. I know everybody's been sitting on the edge of their seats waiting for the next Air Fryer story. <laughs> so I kind of have one anyways no there was this this new marinade that I found and the thing is if you do um if you do mozzarella sticks in there it doesn't goo everywhere you know the goo doesn't go everywhere but hey speaking of gooing everywhere Stefan what's up buddy you're back <laughs> yes yes I'm back on the podcast uh, of some kind in in the world of podcasting <laughs> yes Yes, this is joining ladies us and from gentlemen. the northern tundra of Canada, the great and the majestic dragon himself, Stefan Dragonstone. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, and now you can't get rid of me. That's, that's right. okay. That's right. I've had the clap before. I'm, wait, no, I'm sorry, that's a different <laughs> story. Wait, <man. laughs> is it is a golf allowed? clap? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Golf clap. No, we've, we're having Stefan on because... Um, well, you know, we want him to come on the show a little more, a little more often, and he's got some time. Um, so we're thinking, what do you think, Stefan? Maybe once a month. What were you thinking? Like every two, three episodes, or whatever. Probably every two or three episodes. Uh, hopefully, uh, depending mm-hmm. on my schedule. But my schedule hopefully will have Sundays off, which will make this simpler. <laughs> yep. Indeed. I can put my foot down and say, no, not available on Sundays. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, to, uh, I mean, go we, to gaming church. <laughs> I mean, we always, I always enjoy playing with you. You've run a couple yep. of really awesome games. Love the Shine Tower game that I played in a few of Thank those. You. And then your, um, your Realms of yep. Tiernoth, one you ran for the brewery over mm-hmm. there, was lots of fun. And we always, I always like your perspective on, on gaming and, you know, where you come from and everything. We're, Kind of oh, the same you. age. We've been gaming about the lot, same time. Almost, so almost, yeah, uh, yeah. I like playing yeah. playing with you guys. I mean, playing alongside you guys. Yeah. <laughs> the exactly. Yeah. In yep. front of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yep, we Chris no. and I, as we do, we like to spice things up, brings bring on guests, and and honestly, mm-hmm. we we were looking for someone to show on the show, like as a feature, uh, third mm-hmm. third host almost, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Stefan just happened to be available at the right time so it's perfect for us so. yeah well that's it things didn't really pan out with jamie and the rpg we were not that you know nothing bad happened between he and i we just agreed to see other nerds as uh, like i said a few times before <laughs> um and then suddenly you know tony kind of surprised me at one of our star wars wednesday games and seeing that he and chris had uh mentioned talked about this together and that uh mm-hmm. It would like to be have me on more regularly, which you know yeah. really touches me in in ways you, you we won't go into. And <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty then. And All right, man. Yeah, so I thought about it and said, yeah, I, you know, took maybe mm-hmm. three seconds. So. <laughs> Sweet. Well, now that we have you on semi regularly, we're going to put you to work. What kind of news yep. do <laughs> do we have? Oh, we have a bit, a few bits of news. So. Um, on the FFG forums, there was a new adventure uh, for the Android Shadow of the Beanstalk came out. Uh, Night on the Town, I believe it's called, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Just, and now, is, it, is that the one they ran f- at Gen Con last year? Or I, don't I don't know. Don't no. Know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's one? actually, 
it was actually originally written as two parts. One mm-hmm. was the first half is what they wrote for Gen Con, and then the second half is what they wrote for PAX. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. And so now they put it all together into one, and uh, right. it's instead of being a one-shot single adventure, it's, it's a little longer. It's probably going to take a couple sessions. So. Okay. Right. A two-shot. Two <laughs> or <a> three-shot. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right, cool. And then we also have uh, for our Nerds International community the uh, NivCon, Nerds International Virtual Con, happening next weekend, March 30th and 31st. So you can go on the MeWe page. There's a NivCon mm-hmm. uh, page there. Uh, if not, you can always ask someone for the link. Yep, I'll have the link in the show notes. Yeah, that's it. Um, there's, there's, the, there's even a website to. To register for games, or if you want to run a game, there's still lots of rooms. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, not only for Nerds International. That's for like no, anybody no. who's listening or whoever wants to. It's yeah, exactly. Yeah. Come over and uh, you know get there to know is, us. You there guys is a little bit of Genesis. Uh, mm-hmm. There is a little bit of Genesis. Jim Parton is running. Um, well, he's running something. I can't really say. It's Ghostbusters uh, in uh, okay. Terranoth. Okay. Um, I do believe <laughs> awesome. it is. And, uh, All right. Yeah, I was going to run something, but I, I have too many things going on with the family at home right now. But what I may do is get on and do some um, playing KeyForge with people, tra- mm-hmm. uh, teaching people how to play KeyForge right. as a drop-in thing on uh, Saturday night, if I can, or on um, Sunday. So cool. yeah, I've played a bit of KeyForge. It's kind of good, but I have haven't had time to play recently. But mm-hmm. it's still pretty good. Sweet. So yeah, join us there. Uh, you know, That's if you want to start a game, go. Uh, Go ahead and you know post it, and we won't say no. <laughs> cool. Yep, we'll put the uh, website for that. Uh, mm-hmm. Maite over at Nerds International, she made the website for it. Yeah, uh, it looks pretty great. It's mm-hmm. beautiful. You can go to that website. We'll put that in our links, uh, show note links, and um, you can go over there. You can sign up for games. You can sign up to run games. It's still yeah. open for registration for both. Yeah, um, it's free. Uh, you can use whatever platform you want: Fantasy Grounds, Roll Twenty, Tabletop Simulator, uh, Discord. Right? Discord, uh, do it over Skype. Skype with just you know mm-hmm. on your system, whatever you want. I think Tony, you could play the um, you could play the KeyForge game on. They have a website for that, right? Yep, yep. they have the KeyForge mm-hmm. Crucible, yeah, and, uh, Crucible, and then yeah. just use uh, either Skype or Discord for chat. Sweet. Yeah. All right, what else do we have? Yeah. We got some big news, something coming this week. Yeah, yeah. One of our good friends, a nerd uh, on the network, Eric Lemoureux, has. Uh, put together all his information for a setting called Wise Guys, and you'll have a Kickstarter that starts on Tuesday, March 26th, two days from now. Well, two days from recording this, anyway. Right. <laughs> so you'll pro- everybody will probably list- be listening to this on a Monday morning the next yeah. day? Yeah. Tuesday, Wise Guys. And I'm not sure how long setting. it's going to be for, but yeah. it'll, it'll be it'll plenty of time. I think a standard 30 or so days. Cool. Um, and uh, it, if you're not familiar with that kind of setting, it's a sort of gangster 1970s, 80s genre. You know, any movie that you know features uh, Joe Pesci or De Niro, and all, all those are <laughs> yep. definitely riffed off of that, inspired by uh, yeah. Chicago or uh, any mm-hmm. big city mobster. You can take it and tweak it if you want a more modern setting or even older 1920s. Yep. But you get a nice kit. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, um, I, we have we yeah. did a review and, of it uh, on, um, mm-hmm. I think, our con review show when we had Eric on. I yeah. might have given and, him 50 pieces of awesome for that because it's yeah, pretty damn and, cool. And if you want to know more, I think Jamie is supposed to wants to have Eric on to on talk about it cool. on the brewery. So if you want to uh, stay tuned for for that, yeah. and you, you can go in the chat for for this Twitch channel and you know, harass them. So. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yep. Uh, if you feel like you want to get in on that setting, maybe you want to port it over for Genesis, or maybe you do play Savage Worlds, uh, you can like, go because over it is there. Fa- yeah, because, sorry, it, it is mainly for Savage Worlds, but... Right. Can easily adapt it uh, if you need to. Mm-hmm. Right, and you could just get over the Kickstarter and throw a few bucks Eric's way. He is one heck of a writer, and he has put uh, yep. two and a half, almost three solid years of work into this product project. Oh, yeah. So, oh yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. He's he's come Show. up with other stuff along with his friend uh, Mornay uh, with just insert imagination 
Much and it's product. a beautiful package that they've oh got put together. Um, the layout mm-hmm. that they are having um, uh, Carl yeah. Kiesler do the layout mm-hmm. for it looks beautiful. So it's going to be a great looking product. That's it. Yeah. So go, go, go now, go now, <laughs> go now, go, go. <laughs> All right. Well, we have some listener feedback. Our good friend Sam Barrett is back again over on YouTube. Yeah, Sam's awesome. And he says, "Yet, uh, hey guys, yet another excellent episode. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate your reviews. The Realms of Terranoth review was informative and entertaining. And this, and S- Stefan, you were part of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this was certainly no mm-hmm. different. I generally prefer fantasy to sci-fi settings for my games, but I will always make special ex- exceptions." For good space opera, Star Wars, 40K, and Cyberpunk, Androids, uh, Shadowrun, so on. I confess, like much of the gamer community, I am working on my own homebrew setting. Shocker! (laughs) And And this will be an excellent resource for it. Unfortunately, I doubt I'll ever get around to writing a PDF, but I will try to send you guys an email about it. That'd be cool, Sam. Yeah, that would be great. Yes, yes. Anyways, thanks for your, as always, for your videos, guys. You give me the opportunity to step out of my crazy busy life to brainstorm game theory over one of the best rule sets I've ever found. Thanks a million. Peace, Sam. And as always, he put a TLDR. TLDR, can't wait to own a copy and use it for my homebrew setting. (laughs) I love that. Thanks a lot, Sam. We appreciate you um, giving that feedback. Yeah, 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 you're like our, our number one YouTube commenter. <laughs> so, and we really appreciate it. <laughs> yep. And <laughs> our um, <laughs> and if every if you all had listened to our um, the last fifty pieces of awesome that I awarded to Drainsmith and his everything you need and my comment yeah. that I made. Yeah, yeah you went overdrafted. Lady, you gave him a, an extra hundred there. <laughs> I gave him two hundred pieces of awesome because. I'm thinking about trying to find what I need to find this week. I'm thinking of Tony's comment where, fuck, I probably just should have picked one thing out of there and mm-hmm. milked it for what it's worth. Yeah, but anyway. Cherry pick it. <laughs> no, Drain Smith dropped the lady in a, a pick of the lady in the red dress in his um, drive there for us. So you know what, Drain Smith? Thank you. That's, now it has everything. Now it has everything a body needs. Sure. <laughs> a gaming body needs. Yeah. After that show, I did go on uh, the link to his site and it's like, wow, there's a lot of stuff. This is good. This is good. For me, this is not useful for now, but maybe in a Maybe. If right. I ever, this will be awesome. There we go. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hence, the, oh, now yeah. you can see why it was two, 250 pieces of awesome or 200 pieces of awesome. I yep, printed yeah. all of his little GM sheets on cardstock, and I have yeah. them. And now I can just flip them and have the yep. GM sheets in a uh, cardstock. That's cool. That's very cool. So, very yeah, cool. It's excellent. Well, hey, speaking of 50 pieces of awesome, should we get into that? I say, what the hell? What the hell? Welcome to 50 Pieces of Awesome. This is where Chris spends countless hours scouring the dark corners of the interweb to find something cool to share with yourselves, myself, and now Stefan. So what have you got for us this week, buddy? Oh, do you guys remember this little platform game that was on this platform called the Xbox? What? Yes, no, everybody, never heard about there it. was something before, be- before the Xbox One, <laughs> the Xbox 360. There was an Xbox. Stop and saying I, that no. so loud. My Kinect is going to turn on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I never, 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 never heard, heard of, of Xbox at, at all. Anyways, there was, this, there was this game called Crimson Skies. I love me some alternate, al- alternate history. Jared mm-hmm. D.W. put together, compiled things, and created this Crimson Skies um, setting for Genesis. He genesized it. And <laughs> holy crap, dude, this is pretty cool. There's 44 pages of awesome in here. Um, <clears throat> Do you ever play Crimson Skies at all? I did. I played through the yeah. whole game. It was pretty there, cool. It was actually, you know, the actual Fossa had a, uh, a role-playing game of it, too, back in the day. Yeah. The creators of Battletech. 
I okay. thought they had a, a and I think they, game of it. Didn't they have and, and I think they have miniatures and isn't it like in a miniatures game too? Mm-hmm. Yep. Could be, yeah. Am Not I thinking some of miniatures. something different? Nope, you're on the right I'm track. Thinking, okay, so okay. Oh, I and we're seeing some miniatures that the planes were really cool, you know, the yeah. way they, they take some traditional planes and just tweak them. Or sometimes yes. just go, what the hell? Let's do let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's a nice little like three, four, five page alternate history write up that he combined mm-hmm. in here. Nice little map of um a new like North America, you know, Canada, United States and Mexico. Kind of takes place in the late thirties. Um if you've ever seen that movie Sky Captain and World of Tomorrow, kind of made me think of that. Which yeah, that was a sweet looking movie. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So it's something along those lines. But what's really neat is he integrated the X-Wing rules for Mm -hmm. movement and templates for planes. He has the movement templates in the plane section at the end. Um, He threw a lot of knowledge skills in here, though, which is interesting. So we can make maybe you can make different types of um, campaigns, if you'd like, you know, an investigative campaign or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um Let's see. What other notes do I have in yeah, here? The, the planes, the, the pilots discover a, pla- a long lost planet, uh, island. And yeah. There's this little little guy in a white tuxedo goes, the plane, the plane. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So we added um, like engineering, history, navigation, education, geography, politics, tactics, science. Um, these, these, and then he flavored these talents to be, um, you know, in the right genre as well. Um, there's a signature vehicle talent where you get to pick a silhouette three or lower vehicle that your mm-hmm. player owns. And being that it's Crimson Skies and everything's in the sky. Yeah. Um, yeah. The nice. art is cool, too. Some of the throwback art on it. and Dog fighting. Oh, dog fighting rules. Here we go. Age. Yeah, exactly. Towards the back. Where the heck? Oh, so some of the movement templates he made up and put on each of the um, planes, which is kind of cool. And then as far as the back, yeah, so he's got some, um, like, two pages of these dogfights. So using the, um, you know, using, like, the X-Wing rules, if you've got them, you could do that. And then the character sheet... Yeah, and do you, sorry to interrupt. Do you, yeah. do you need the X fight X wing rules? Though? No, 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 no. So, you don't, you, no, you don't have to. I mean, okay. you could you could play this. You could play it with the vehicle oh. rules right out of the book. But I think he okay. added this in here because he has the X wing. Maybe his game, maybe his player, maybe his group plays X wing, and he just okay. put it in here, um, which is a which is pretty cool. Oh, but what I one. really like, I really like this character sheet. I don't know if you guys have bring it brought it up or not. But the, what I like is the first page of this character sheet, half of it is a character, other half of the sheet is the aircraft. And it's, that right there it, just tells you the flavor of the game itself, where your aircraft is just as much of a character as you are, as your players. Yeah. It's yeah. very much patterned after the end of the world character sheets. Okay. Um, the same kind of look. Um, okay. The end of the world uh, series from Fantasy Flight, mm-hmm. but no, I love this. I love the little speed tracker on the side of the character sheet for your ship yep. or for your aircraft. And he's got I, gauges. I you know the gauges for your for your characteristics and whatever. <laughs> That's just neat. This is oh yeah, cool. very well done, Jared. I love that character sheet. It's two pages. Yeah, it's all, just two it's pages. All the, and it's all in the details. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he does have obligation and motivation. On this character sheet, which probably the because he I think he played this in Star Wars and he converted it over, but you mm-hmm. can very much very much put your you know put the um, motivations um, in here as well, and you know obligation is a great mechanic for for maybe a setting like this as well, or our what we're talking about tonight favors could be pretty mm-hmm. cool in this setting too. Yeah. Now that I think about it. But no, I think obligation works. works well in favor of being one of the obligations, but uh, yeah, it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you guys think? I know I talked a lot mm-hmm. over that, just oh. kind of get a quick well, overview well, of it, but... Yeah. You guys I like the dogfighting rules, personally. 
Um, mm, yeah. You know, they're not your Michael Stick, Michael Vick style dog fighting rules. They're regular, you know, airplanes in the air dog fighting. <laughs> oh, um, oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, gotcha. Shots fired. Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the, yeah, no, I enjoy them. I think uh, I think it. Uh, that's about all I really kind of gleamed onto was I really like the dog fighting rules. So, yeah, yeah, I didn't. I didn't really look at him to say, "Oh, hey, is this balance? Is it kind of neat?" But he's got like a power slide, a rollout. Mm-hmm. Haven't played as much X Wing as I may have liked. I know you play. You play a lot of it, Tony. So used to. I don't play used anymore. To. Well, used mm-hmm. to. But does these add a, a bit to it? What do you think? Um, his dog fighting rules are pretty solid. It, yeah, pretty solid. Um, oh, for lack of a better, I'm trying to find them here. So Page you determine forward. initiative, and then you mm-hmm. yeah. This basically it, it takes the um, it ta- it's basically the X wing maneuver rules written yeah. down. Um, so the green maneuvers, you get a boost. Out. So you don't need to have the X wing maneuver, or excuse me, have the X wing rule book to know how to play. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's got his own um, little rules and such for how it's done with Genesis, which I think is really nice. Yeah. So cool, nice, Coolio. Yeah, because well, I wouldn't mind sometimes playing a, a system like that. I like the, the the look of the various planes, you know, taking a variance on World War II planes. Mm-hmm. And when I watched really recently, maybe a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago, the uh, the movie Red Tails, which is an awesome movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it features my favorite World War II plane, the P-51 Mustang, which oh, is, there you go. I think, one of the sexiest Cadillac planes Cadillac of the sky! <laughs> yeah. yeah. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> it could take a fucking yeah. beating, though, man. <laughs> yeah, well... There's one documentary, it was a French documentary I watched years ago about the top 10 planes, and, but they take planes from different eras, from jets okay. to biplanes, and they rate them you know, for fighter jets and uh-huh. fighter planes. And they said the number one spot was for the P-50 Mustang. Mm-hmm. Because Japanese overall, had to be real high in there, too. It was, but it had its weaknesses because it has low armor, whereas the P-51 had awesome speed, long range, armor, armaments, Maneuverability, yeah. you know, like like the, the the Blackbird, you know, R seventy one number, I think Blackbird bomber mm-hmm. was an awesome jet, but it was limited in its in its role. You know, they they take okay. all these kinds of considerations, yep, yep. things into consideration. Like, yeah, when I was a kid here in Michigan, uh, of course, here in Kalamazoo, we had uh, air shows constantly, oh, yeah. and uh, they had a woman that was a stunt pilot that flew a pink P-51 Mustang. And every time she flew that thing, it (laughs) was amazing when she flew that thing around. So I agree with you. It's a beautiful plane. Oh, yeah. All right. So there is. Enough on that tangent. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So, Stefan, would you like to to, um, do the honors, my friend? The honors? Of... Oh yes, oh, uh, so so to <laughs> to Jared DW, Chris awards you fifty pieces of awesome, and just for the hell of it, I'll award you an extra nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> Since it's two thousand nineteen, and we're progressive like that. <laughs> yes, that exactly. and add them to add them to fifty, and you get a certain number and do what you want with it. <laughs> oh, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Oh, great. <laughs> All right. All so, right, let's get into Let's get into the meat and bones of this show. There we go. <laughs> All right. Well, hey everybody, we are back to the books of Genesis. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Yes, uh, we are talking. Eh? <laughs> yeah, eh? yeah. I just finished my um, Canadian maple flavored whiskey, <laughs> and uh, so the name of our episode tonight is "Savor the Favor." And that's right. Yeah, we're gonna be talking favors tonight. We're gonna be go over the fa- we're gonna go over the favor system in Android. Not sexual favors. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Not necessarily. Depending whether that's a, it could be a those. It could, those well, that could be a small con. favor from maybe me. No, but <laughs> wouldn't call those it a only, big favor. No, those only but, happen at the con. So. Yeah. <laughs> and then factions as well. And then, mm-hmm. um, yeah, we're gonna talk favor the favor system tonight, on Android. Yes. 
So mm-hmm. um, if you would like to open, if everybody has their Android books right now, open it up to page 53. And if you don't have an Android book, pause, go buy the fucking thing, and come back. <laughs> yeah, you can get, Sorry. You can get it on PDF. <laughs> PDF on Drive Through RPG. Go, right. go now. Tony. Put the... Put this on pause and go. Starting favors, page 53. Dude, it's not page 53. It is, too. No, it's not. <laughs> yes, it is. Determined favors, page 53. Yeah. Shadow of the Bane stock. Right there, oh. motherfucker. Step six, determine <laughs> favors. 53 at the bottom in the nope. purple dress. Page there. 54. Oh, you're on the PDF. I'm on the PDF. I'm on the PDF. <laughs> I went the wrong way. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yes. Yeah, sorry, everybody. Can I, Determine phase. Can I reach wars. through the Skype and just give a, a slap whiskey on the ass? To, uh, to, uh, <laughs> I just had two fingers of it. Yeah, two fingers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the top and the bottom one. <laughs> it's Canadian whiskey, eh? Yay. Yeah, eh? So, um, yeah, so step six in the creating your character um, for Android is determine your favors that your character would have. Um, so basically, this could be really any service, anything anybody does for your character, and then what you could do for somebody else. And in this case, they've the favor that they've been giving you is like maybe you start with 100 credits of gear, 500 credits of gear, or 1,500 credits of gear, or additional starting XP. So you have that favor that you owe somebody to start the game with, but you start with more starting XP or more credits. That's the this gist is, of this part yeah, of it. But This is you. kind of similar to the obligations in Edge yes, of the Empire. Definitely. Right? Exactly. Definitely. But definitely. does it replace... The motivations, or does it go with nope. motivations? Goes hand you in still hand. have your four motivations. Yes. Okay. Um, yep. So uh, what you'll see is, it tells you here, it, the player determines what level of favor that they want to mm-hmm. owe somebody. Yep. Uh, basically, based on what you want to get back. If you want an extra 1,500 credits worth of gear, if you're making a cyborg or a Gmod, you definitely need to do that. You probably um, do. Yep, if you want an extra... Or, yeah, or if you want an extra 20 XP and you want to kind of get a leg up on some of the higher talents, mm-hmm. um, then definitely a big favor. You determine the level of the favor. Your GM determines what the favor is and whom you owe it to. Right. And what I like to do, I like to, I like to, like work with my players mm-hmm. to fit something into their backstory. Yeah. That a first well, yeah. Principle. Whenever you know, whenever I was doing obligation with people. That's kind of how we did it, um, and this is very much like obligation. So, yeah, I think for, yeah, like, I think uh, for Zezri, when I when I when I created Zezri, my hacker for Jim's thing, I did a big favor with the Yakuza. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so he was a hacker, slicer, hacker, I guess, and that's right, slicer in Star Wars, <laughs> um, yeah. and um, left it up to Jim to decide when he's going to call that big favor on for me. Um, so, oh, exactly. Like a private investigator might be more inclined to be owed a favor or owing a favor to the NAPD, yep. although he could also owe it to a crime organization or a yep. media, a media mm-hmm. uh, corporation because you know, of helping them out. Yep. So you're not limited, but still, you know, some might have a tendency to go in one one way or the other. Yeah, mm-hmm. but. And it's depending a, on the creativity of the player, you know, you can still have a soldier. It's like, yeah, but you still owe a favor to the Omega Corp. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. And so that's your starting favor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But like they do, they didn't stop there. They nope. they went a little further and basically created the favor economy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now. The next few pages, uh, pages 54 through, um, you know, what is it, Uh, 60-something, 78, 54 through 78, Mm -hmm. describes not only the factions, but also how to work for one of the factions and gives GMs um, a a small, like an idea of how each faction would cash in certain types of favors. Or what you would get from them. Like, for instance, like the Jinteki. Like the Jinteki. Specific favors. These are specific favors only from Jinteki. So a small favor would be, you know, maybe somebody in the lab will analyze a special biological sample for you. 
mm-hmm. as a small favor. A big favor right. would be they provide a custom clone for you. Oh, right. Which yeah. means you have to do something big for them, and you know, in return. Very big, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, the other way that you could – these are for the GM to use, how to use that corporation for favors mm-hmm. that are – being repaid to the players but as a player as a gm you could also reverse that if you have a player who's chosen to work for a specific faction maybe they are a member of the yakuza well you go to the yakuza section and you know the org crime and you go okay um you are owed a regular favor to so and so and now you have an idea as a gm what that person is going to ask of you to do (laughs) oh yeah yeah, <laughs> as an org crime member, mm-hmm. have uh, have you guys ever heard of the uh, sci-fi setting Nova Praxis? Nova Doesn't Praxis. Sound I don't familiar. think I have. It it started out as a fate system. Then they also did the creators also did a Savage World adaptation, okay. and it's a bit cyberpunk-ish, uh, transhumanism where advanced technology has like taking leaps and bounds all of a sudden because of a one AI thought of, thought up of all these things to make life simpler for humans. And they don't have a monetary economy. They have instead a rep rating. Oh, oh so it kind of reminds me of the favor thing. Yeah, how, how good your rep is. And this is all kept, you know, if you're linked to the net and stuff, okay. it keeps track automatically. Oh, and the higher, of course, your rep, the more, the higher you are on the social ladder. You know, you're maybe like a RISTI or head of okay. corporation, and have access to all the, all the luxuries or high tech stuff. And if you're her lower, well, you're you're struggling. You're a mid level techie, or you're borderline. You know, just pushing mm-hmm. a broom in the <laughs> in the hospital. So well, it's kind of interesting that way too. So yeah, that, that yeah. kind of reminded me, like, yeah, there you keep track of your favors, how much you owe, how yep. much you're owed, so you can call them in sometimes. So yeah, yeah. So let's let's cover how the favor economy is used. Okay. On page eighty, mm-hmm. right. we have a little blurb on it, but then the favor economy is at its core an exchange economy. The mm-hmm. core game mechanic is. The, of this economy is that the character can exchange a favor for a favor of equal value with any other character NPCs included Um, and also with uh, other player characters maybe Um, if you're playing more of a rivalistic kind of campaign Mm -hmm. Um, in our system favors fall into three categories and the same three categories as the starting Mm -hmm. you have your small favors your regular favors and your big favors and it goes in to describe what each one of those entails right But the big thing I like about it when they talk about uh, – they have these little rules that they put in over here on page 81. Yeah. Exchanging a bigger favor for a smaller favor. Mm-hmm. Yes. Also known as stringing them along. And then also, conversely, yeah. we have exchanging a smaller favor for a bigger favor or yep. trading up. That's right. right. So, That's right. So let's go over those. Okay. Okay. So um, somebody wanted, uh, Chris, how about you jump in on the first one? On the stringing them along? Yeah. Yeah, so if you want to ask for, so say you owe somebody a big favor, but you want, um, do you want to get a smaller favor from them? Right? Mm -hmm. Or, Sarah, sorry, say you're owed a big favor, but you want a smaller favor from them. Like without really cashing in your big favor without to do cash it. it. Without yeah. cashing in the big favor to do it. You'll need to make a coercion check versus their discipline check. And if you succeed, you'll continue to owe them the original favor um, after, the, yeah, after the small one has been resolved. But if you fail, they may say, hey, you know, we're we're square. Yep. We I did this now, little favor for you. Now we're square. You know, and no, it doesn't um, say it doesn't say here. But would you, as a GM, throw uh, adversary in that? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. You, damn, we are we are <laughs> we are brothers of a Might. different mother. Because I was thinking of your <laughs> not to give anything away, but there might be something in advantageous threats where I was actually thinking of this. Um, <laughs> it's not a. 
it's not a social encounter per se. It's but just it's already check. an opposed check. It's an opposed yeah. check. They may yeah. have, so but, they, if they, but if they're trained in discipline and you throw adversary on top of it, that makes it very difficult. No, yeah, but still, it's a if you're, question, I'm not sure. Yeah, but if you're you're the NPC, let's say, owes you a really big favor. You know, mm-hmm. he's, he's a high up in the yakuza, mm-hmm. and he says he owes Zezri a favor. Well, you know, if he. He's probably be a B adversary, maybe. He'll be a little Here's different. how I would do it as a GM. This is it's a it's a house rule, but I think as a yeah. GM it it seems underhanded until as a GM you say, I'm going to flip a story point mm. mm-hmm. from the GM's pool to the player's pool, and I'm gonna go ahead and apply his adversary talent to this role because and yeah. you have a reason for it. And right. usually would only do it if it was adversary one or two. I yeah, wouldn't do yeah. that to players if it was adversary three or four. Right. I mean, you could even make, instead of it being a, a single check, would you, would you do a, um, would you, would you create a social encounter out of this? Like a All party, depends on like a how party, like a part, would you, you would you do a party wide mm-hmm. favor and organization kind of thing. You know what I mean? Not just they, individuals. I swear we have the same, same fucking brain. <laughs> that's an, that's another thing I was going to talk about. Okay. At the end, when I say using favors and other things, you could even do a group favor yeah. as a GM. You could have your group owe favors to organizations, and they owe... Now, that well, would always that. be a major favor. If it's well, a large that, yeah. group... And a corporation that owes it to them, or a media conglomerate mm-hmm. that owes it to them. Yeah, especially you, if you have yeah, a group that's been doing working together for a while. It's like earning an enemy. It's like yeah. the enemy is shared by the group, so why not the favor? You know, it's like okay, this corporation yeah. Yeah, yeah. or yakuza or you know police officer or police department okay, so owes me a favor it. because I really held them out. <laughs> okay, one question, <laughs> we, not necessarily related: Is it yakuza or is it yakuza? It's yakuza. Okay, yakuza. yakuza. So, yakuza. so it is kind of yakuza, but it's yeah. yakuza. 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 The okay. emphasis is on the first syllable. The usually. emphasis, okay, is yeah. on the first syllable. Got it. <laughs> usually, yakuza. Yeah. Yakuza. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> Stefan. Yeah, it's just I've short. heard it. I've heard tomato, tomato, and you're Canadian, so yeah. okay. A lot. A lot of Americans pronounce it yakuza. Yakuza. Yeah. I've always. Th- I've always pronounced it yakuza. It is yakuza. Okay. Yakuza. 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 Yep. All right. Uh, anyway, sorry, we made the tangents. So that's no. there. So what's the other? No. One? Okay. So yeah. What's the other one, Stefan? Yeah, the other, other one is when you're exchanging a smaller favor for a bigger one. You want to trade up. Mm-hmm. So I'm all about size. You know, I want big, the bigger ones. The bigger so. Ones. <laughs> and so in this case, you're, in this case, you're cashing in the favor, but you're well, trying to get a bigger one out of them, right? Well, that's it. You're, well, if you're owed a favor, but you're a small favor, but you're trying to to get, and you're asking for a favor that would be greater. It's like, okay, you're owed a small favor. Yeah, I you owe me a favor because you know uh, I I looked at after your pet, but now it's like, no, no, I need something more out of you. That's right. You know, it's like then you're trading up. It's like I, I want you to really get the heat off of me with the NAPD. It's like, whoa, 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 that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's use the example of you're borrowing your uncle's car. Yeah. Huh. But you know you have no intention of returning it. <laughs> no, exactly. So that, of course, like they say, you know, always requires a check because now you're trying to get someone to give you something that's more valuable yeah. than something that's less valuable. It's like negotiating for, you know, I'll, I'll treat you this paperclip for an exchange of this stapler. <laughs> so it's that, swing line that's, that's, the thing. Uh, that's another matter. It's is it ergonomic? It's not is worth it a, trading. It a, no. yeah, it's no. a priceless. <laughs> so in this case, it's all, it's still an opposed check, but then you're trying to charm someone versus they're cool. Okay. And if they succeed, then the target has definitely agreed to to give them to give you a better favor in exchange. But if you fail, they refuse, and you still owe them for the original small favor. Gotcha. 
Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, then it goes into this little bit down at the bottom here. Failing with threat or despair. Mm -hmm. If your character attempts to make an unequal exchange of favors and fails, your GM may spend four threat or a despair to have your character also anger the target. Not only does your character fail to achieve the unequal exchange, but the target decides they no longer owe you shit. <laughs> clean, <laughs> clean slates. Bye-bye. That's right. <laughs> Which That's I great. love that. That yes, is great. Is. <laughs> Hence your question of, may I apply adversary? <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, when that yeah. case for the adversary is like, yeah, it would be a good idea since it's not mm-hmm. a standard combat. It's not a standard social encounter, but, you know, you spend story points, so at least the, the player side is rewarded with a little something for their trouble. <laughs> yeah. And I would do it only in those rare occasions where, you know, someone's trying to go, okay, let's, I, I owe the, this guy owes me a hundred credits. I'm going to have him, I'm going to have him kill my next door neighbor for, for a hundred yeah. credit. Oh, debt? What? No way. <laughs> yeah, whatever, dude. Yeah, no. <laughs> and it and always depends on the, on the quality of the relationship between yep. the NPC. You know, yeah. If he's already pretty friendly, it's like, okay, even if he's an adversary, he's like, yeah, I'll skip the adversary and make a cool check. He's not your best friend, but at least mm-hmm. he's not hostile. It's like, okay, cool. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, um, the sidebar here, the smaller than small sidebar mm. is interesting so that yes. you don't have to, so yeah. you, know, you don't have to keep track of, oh man, I bought you a cup of coffee last week. Yo me, yeah, a cup of coffee. <laughs> that you that don't want to crack it. that shit. And if you do in my no. game, just don't. <laughs> well, it's, it's like in real life, you know. It's like okay, you, you need a buck or two to, to, to get a beer. It's like here, here's Chris. Here's a buck. There well, you go. Exactly, oh, exactly. <laughs> you know, you might buy somebody lunch one day, and then you know, a few yeah. weeks later, whatever, you know, they'll return the favor. It's those things. No, well, you don't want to. You don't want to track <laughs> that stuff. No, and if they don't, it's like. I don't care. You're you're a friend. You you were in need. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's a, that's that's a nice little sidebar to read. To, right. Okay. Um, Prime you. example. Yeah. I'll give an example. Two oh uh, two. You got a player character and an NPC. They both work for Jinteki. They both work in the lab. Mm-hmm. Um. The 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 player is a tech. Sidelines doing things with other players. You know. But his day job is he works for Jinteki. Mm-hmm. He has this other guy. That he constantly, well, let's just say once, he buys the guy coffee. Does the guy owe him a favor? No. He just bought him coffee. But you come in and say, hey, Jerry, I've been buying your lunch for the past two years. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Every day I buy your lunch because you never seem to have any lunch money. Jerry, you owe me. Yeah, you need to kill my neighbor. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. or, or at least or at least my neighbor's dog an adversary then <laughs> well, you know, maybe my, at least kill my neighbor's dog or his damn teacup teacup giraffe <laughs> no, but that might add up to over a hundred credits worth of oh, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. small favor you know mm-hmm. and then if it's something like that where it's a bunch of little favors over time as a gm you can just at some point go you know what mm-hmm. that's worth a small favor now right uh, right well, and they and they have the, they have uh, they have kind of a monetary value for these like small favors would be anything up to like a hundred credits, a regular favor would be anything up to a thousand credits, and then a big favor would be really anything over a thousand credits. You know, I mean, for for well, stuff. It, you know, so I mean, if you want to put regular, like a monetary value on it, exactly. Yeah, that would a, re- a regular coffee machine coffee. You know, mm-hmm. don't bother. But it comes from Starbucks. You know, with a half latte, fra- mm-hmm. frappe with extra foams. Like, okay, this is a me. It's at least a small favor. <laughs> right. I mean, I got it gluten free too. I mean, <laughs> whoa, well, gluten free. Oh damn. So, another what thing. What's that? Apologies, called? coffin. Okay. Uh, Another thing that I wanted to mention about favors um, mm-hmm. is that uh, as a GM, this is an economy. Mm-hmm. So you've got to keep them flowing back and forth. Yeah. For for every favor you owe a player, you should try to at some point extract a favor from them. Players can get themselves out of out of out of uh, sticky situations sometimes by Mm -hmm. taking on favors that they owe somebody hey you know i got a friend in the police force um he you know he posted my bail you know that kind of thing or you know those kinds of things 
keep the economy flowing back and forth, just like yeah. story points, just like, um, just like, uh, um, uh, what am I thinking? Um, <laughs> Benny's over in Savage oh, Benny's, yeah. Benny's got you. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's an economy. You keep them mm-hmm. flowing back and forth throughout the game, uh, throughout more of a like a uh, a campaign, mm-hmm. and and they'll be much more useful to you. Yeah, and, and besides, there are there are talents. Now, this is kind of a little little audible here. There there are there are talents that your players will get that once a session. I'm looking at Distant oh, Francisco. Why don't you bring one up? Yeah, yeah. I've got. I'm looking at Distant Francisco. If that's how you pronounce that, <laughs> tier Disin one. Disinfranchisco. Disinfranchisco. Chisto. Anyway, Chisto. Oh. <laughs> when you take this talent, your character gains streetwise or survival as a career skill. In addition, once per session, your character may collect a small favor from any other disinfranchisco, even if they do not owe your character a favor. So. You know, having favors flowing back and forth. You're laughing, Tony, fucker. Next time, pick what you can pronounce, okay? <laughs> All right, try my off contact, motherfucker. <laughs> that reminds me of one of my good friends, Joe, when I used to play with him. You would play illusionist, and he would always pr- mispronounce prismatic. You would say prime, you would say prime static. Prime static. <laughs> Prime Static Sphere! Prime Static Spray! It's like, yes, Joe. Prime Static. All right, so we'll go things, with Prime Mouth things Contact cling then. To each other. <laughs> it's like my one friend that couldn't pronounce Minute. It was always Melf's Minute Meteors. <laughs> like, this isn't Minute Rice, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so if they get these kind of, kind of talents and you already have established that ebb and flow of the, of the favors... Then they'll be, you know, then it, then it'll be a little more natural for for them to use these talents. So I just figured I'd kind of mention that. No, and the talents allow you to use them more often too. Yeah, so. and the, but the thing is, like, it's um, you could collect a small favor even if they don't owe your character a favor. Exactly. You know what I mean, and yeah. Yeah, you have to start start somewhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. No, those are great. There's a whole bunch of them, tier one talents that are great, and then some of the higher tier ones that allow you to call in higher level favors. But um, mm-hmm. though, yeah, there there are a whole bunch of them, and they are yep. wonderful for that. So good call, Chris. Great audible. Sweet, sweet. All right. So we, as we do, uh, we tend to expand this out beyond one book of Genesis and go into how could we use this in other settings? Yeah. What, what kind of settings would you call, would you put favors in? Well, you have a nice list here of yeah. them that you threw in the, well, I mean, you know, I'll tell you that, um, that Crimson Sky setting would be a, would, would be, it would be a nice setting for that because, you know, and maybe maybe because there's some investigative stuff there, um, you could do some sort of resistance rebellion kind of thread or or um, thing where you know, hey, we'll do this for you, and you can do this for us. You know, um, or get your uh, your mechanic there, or mechanic. Said, Come on, get, you got to repair my plane quick. Or <laughs> uh, well, yeah, yeah, something along along those lines. Or if, say, you had decided to port over, say, I don't know, a new Kickstarter coming out Tuesday, March 26th, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> into I mean, a Genesis game, you could, totally use the, of- yeah, <laughs> you could totally use a favor system in a, in a Wise Guys. Wise Guys, oh, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what, it, what that's all about, right? Yeah, yeah. I put your I put your guy on ice there. Yeah. So you know, I think you need owe me a favor. Me, yeah. Do for you. You know what that's I mean? Bada you know, let's not forget this. Bada boom, bada bing. <laughs> now. Yep. What about Terranoth? Oh no, no, never in Terranoth. <laughs> Would you do it no. in a, or or fantasy setting in general? Favors. Well, I like could see my... it. I could see maybe. I don't. I don't know if I would do favors in a high fantasy setting when you may depends have a lot on of credits. How you're gaming. It all, gaming. It all like, depends yeah, on the kind like, of the game. Now, if you have yeah. something like a like a Warhammer gritty, where credits. Where the poor of the poor don't necessarily have a lot of um, have a lot of money to pay for things, mm-hmm. but you have services, things you do to kind of exchange. Then yeah, I would say I would say so. I would have yeah, variation on the barter system, and uh, that's what it feels like to me. It feels like a lot, a lot. It feels very much a barter system, you know. 
Well, so even well, even a fantasy system that would be like heavily akin to Game of Thrones, where you've got mm-hmm. lots of political intrigue, like Tony wrote court drama. You know, like you got intrigue, mm-hmm. like I did you a favor. You know, I voted in your favor for this, or I backed you. Absolutely, like, well, now you owe me. That would be perfect well, if you mm-hmm. were converting L five R over into well, definitely uh, oh, yeah. into Genesis. You could court drama, and that could very well be handled mm-hmm. with the favor system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, most definitely. And yeah, you know, you could do it in, you could definitely, I think you could definitely do it in, in Tiernoth in some way or another. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. well that's it. A dungeon delve, maybe not, it may not come up <laughs> that much. But, but if, no. if <laughs> anywhere where you're stuff. dealing with more than two or three, any setting where you're de- dealing with more than two or three factions, I think you yeah. have large numbers of factions, you could very easily throw it in. Well, it's the Thieves Guild, you know. I, I'm looking to mm-hmm. to sell all this stuff I've just found of, in the dungeon, you know, you know. But and some of it, yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe some of the jewelers in the city might recognize yeah. it. So I mean, I since can it was see, stolen by people, I can see adding. Or, I can see adding adding this to Primeval Thule, most <laughs> definitely. You know. Yeah. yeah. I think. Oh, I most assuredly would have added it to uh, Hellgate if I was doing that again, there because go. there's there's no mon- there's no monetary system at all in that. Yeah. There's no credits. That's what it's all about. Um, it's all oh. it's all it's post apocalyptic. Anything post apocalyptic. Yeah, any post apocalyptic setting. Yeah, where you know cash is not important. It's like you know, no, you know, I, I supplied you with some bullets for your guns. Now mm-hmm. you owe me a favor. <laughs> you owe us water, motherfucker. Get some. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, if you were doing a zombie mm-hmm. apocalypse or you were doing uh you know a fallout game mm-hmm. great great things to add to them i think so too and i have yeah. a couple others listed here i also listed investigative horror uh if you're doing a 1920s call of cthulhu type great thing to add to mm-hmm. that yep um, yeah and then the last one was uh, street level supers, which if you're doing a street level supers campaign, you're basically just doing um, a modern campaign. And it's if it's again factions, lots of factions. You've got it yeah. set in a city. You've got it set in a post apocalyptic time. What's, a, what's could, street level? When you say street level supers, what do you mean? Is it not well, as is, powerful as like I've heard of four color? A great it's, example. Uh, street level supers. I give you the Marvel Netflix universe. Okay. Yeah. Daredevil, Those Jessica Jones, Batman, Daredevil, and Punisher. All, yes. That's what most people can wrap their head around when you think street yeah, levels. Gotcha. They handled their borough of New York, each one of okay. them, Hell's Kitchen or yep. the Bronx. They Even, dealt with crime on the street level. They didn't deal with it on a national level or on an international no, no, world. Global. Avengers, Avengers would be like the equivalent of high fantasy. Yeah, high I've, I've, I've heard that called four color. Is that, They're that's your four color. They're your – okay. That's probably so a GURPS you, thing. <laughs> yeah, you, no, it's it's GURPS. it's really the level of power. Where their power level are oh, they yeah. are they are they defending a certain portion of a city or a city? If that's yeah. what they're protecting, then they're street level. If they're national or global, then they're four color. If they're God. cosmic, then they're cosmic. Right, and I'd say the Avengers mm-hmm. are actually moving into cosmic adventures even yep. now oh, as they yeah. get more and more powerful and you bring yeah. more and more powerful um the heroes threats in. from outside you know even mm-hmm. even Fa- fantastic four with uh the silver surfer that was galactic okay because yeah. you know, now you've got something that wants to eat the world <laughs> okay <laughs> gotcha nice yeah and, and you've of course you've got you know in, in the avengers stuff you've got thanos who's you know yeah. and if you go to the dc side of it you know you're your Batman, your Batman, your Green Arrow, your mm-hmm. all those characters that are those are your street level guys. Well, and sometimes then, they don't have superpowers; they're just extremely well trained. Or if they do have powers, they're not the Superman. You know, I can lift, got it. you know, trains. I can right. more like Spider Man would be a, could be street level because he's got some powers, but he's not cosmic. Right, and it, what it takes to move a street level hero, really, in most comic settings, what it takes to move, and we should we should just do this on a whole comic show, but yeah. um, <laughs> the, what it takes to move street level heroes to the four color uh, arena, really, is just a gear upgrade. Is really got it. Cool. Uh, yeah, I, I saw that in there, and I'm like, I thought that's what was. I just wanted to get that clarified. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you're thinking street level superheroes, uh, the Marvel. Netflix universe is the perfect example. Definitely, yeah. Daredevil and Batman would be the two good examples. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. Well then. 
We need any? Do we got to talk anything else? No, I think we've covered um, favors. So, um, yeah, we just did. you start with one. Uh, if you take talents, you can have more than one that you can cash in regularly. Yep. Uh, and then, it, as a GM and as a player, you should be trying to build new ones throughout the session. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and, how many? And imagine. How many, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Steph. So, and imagine the conflict that you might have as play progresses, unless if you owe your old favors or you, or your old favors from the yakuza or to the yakuza, and then suddenly you you'll have favors that you owe the NAPD and they sometimes mm-hmm. come into conflict. It's like, oh, wait a minute. Um, these guys want <laughs> this to keep quiet and then the NAPD wants to investigate what's going on. It's like, what? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> cool. who, do I, who do I satisfy? I'm going to piss off someone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Was there anything? Here's a question real quick before we move on. Was there any... I don't remember reading any guidelines as to like how many of each level you should have like no. at any given time i thought i read that tony or stuff and you guys remember I reading that seen, no i haven't seen I that mean, so I mean, what, what I think kind they of just guidelines? talk about that at the beginning you know maybe oh a big favor but that, that'll come with mm-hmm. its own strings but then later on i think that could be just flow organically as the game progresses I mean, if I would think the players do are willing to say, yeah, I owe you a favor to, to this guy, and then I owe you another favor to this woman, and then I owe yeah. a favor to the group. Well, you're the one who has to deal with the repercussions afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I could see I could see maybe not having any more than really one big favor, maybe two at yeah. any given time, and maybe, maybe a handful of small yeah. or regular flavors or, at any given time. Because, I mean, you yeah, want to keep track of these, but you don't favors. want to be overwhelmed, right? No, exactly. But as, okay. if the players want to dig their their own grave with big favors, like go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it does briefly cover it on I page fifty four. Okay, what does it say? Favor here, economy. The pay f- favor economy during gameplay. Once the game begins, your character can offer favors and accept favor uh, promises of future favors organically. Hey, I used it right this turn, this time, uh, <laughs> because they made me. Uh, your character can owe as many favors as you want. Although someone who constantly makes promises to do something for someone in the future is probably going to get a reputation as glib and irresponsible. And they may run into trouble with all of all of the people they owe. Likewise, nice. your GM can always decide that an NPC has no interest in being owed a favor yeah. um, and is going to demand some other kind of recompense for the services rendered instead. For gameplay purposes, however, we recommend that you and your GM only use the favor economy for relatively important favors. Yeah. Too many favors become a pain to track and are hard for your GM to work into the ongoing story. Yeah. Your, we suggest that each character should owe and be owed no more than a total of six at any one time. There you go. Well, there yeah, you I go. guess if you think about it, if you have five players, mm. each have six favors, that's 30 that's, favors. You've that's got to, 30 threads you've got to track, yeah. That's a lot of favors of GM. <laughs> Me personally, probably would limit it to three or four. Um, on yeah, And, yeah. you know... Especially if they're all small favors. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that's it. And depending, some of these favors might, like you said, be owed to the group because they did a, the group did a favor for right. a big. And some you know, of these, uh, I mean, you might, you may even, man, you may even to resolve them all in one session. You might be able to resolve a favor in one session, right? I mean, right. You may, you somebody may owe you, and then you pay them back all in one session, maybe. That's true know, story. That, yeah. that could that could happen, and I would encourage that you to maybe try and do something like that too. I mean. Yeah, I'm talking about long-term favors, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. ones a, that you're going to cash in sometime. I wouldn't let a player end a session with, with more than four. Three or four, uh, it, right. Now, if they cashed one in during the session, you know, and they want to accumulate another one, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, figured I'd throw that out there. Yeah. Thought I had read it, and I, and I guess go. I did. <laughs> yeah, they've got a hard cap of six is what they yeah. recommend. So. There we go. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, cool. Well, then. Shall we right, move so on we, then? Or we? Yeah, yeah, we can wrap it up. And if uh, any listeners say that we missed something, uh, let us know, and we'll uh, we can always revisit the uh, the favors. We'll owe you a favor for pointing it out. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Perfect. And then we'll come up with another episode so to pay back the favor. <laughs> there you go. Okay, 
Welcome to Setting the Tone. This is where we dive into another section of one of the many books of Genesis and talk about all of the little adventure seeds and ideas that come to mind. Um, today we're in page 144 through 159 of the Shadow of the Beanstalk. And this is a sample location. It's This isn't a specific... Um, well, it is a specific location inside, but it isn't like a whole district overview. This is just, here's what a block is like. Yeah. Yeah. And dialed down to like, you know, this is where... Distilled. Yes. Yeah, distilled. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Distilled down to the its finest nubs. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Which can give you a good example to build off of. Uh-huh. I mean, it's just, I mean, yeah, this gives you a really, a really great example of what the different pieces, parts of a Mm district, of a, of a um, block. And there are thousands of blocks that you guys can put in your settings. I mean, in your Mm -hmm. system yourself, just create one. Yeah. You could have uh, a whole short setting uh, happen in one block. (laughs) Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, in a city. In a city that takes up what is it, sixty-two thousand square kilometers? Yeah, that's, that's big. That's big. I don't know metric, but that seems big. Um, well, go go on Google, go go on Google Maps. Okay, that's about forty thousand square miles. So uh, if you've got about the a Google, six, the point six. If you got the physical <laughs> book. Open it up to to the map of New Angeles, and then go on Google Maps to compare where the volcano is and. All the coast. Oh, by the way, you did know what you I see saw? that gift that somebody sent out? Somebody that was, actually that was drain yeah. that was uh, that was Drainsmith that did that. I think. Oh, nice! I think he did that. That was pretty sweet. Yeah, it's it covers a, a, a big part of uh, Ecuador. <laughs> it does. Much. Yeah, I love that gift. That was like, oh, this really puts it in perspective. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, I mean, and we we're, I mean, were talking a half a billion people that are registered. That, that doesn't include the yeah. other half a billion that aren't. <laughs> the no, androids and the disenfranciscos. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to get it right. <laughs> well, Chris, Dis- Chris. Disenfranchitos. Disenfranch- <laughs> Dude, and, I, and I took three, three fucking years of Spanish, too. <laughs> but, I can't Chris, pronounce that th- goddamn th- word. Think <laughs> of it. Th- Give yourself a little trick. It's disenfranchised toes, as in they don't have shoes, so their toes are always exposed. Disenfranchised, <laughs> whatever, dude. That even fucks toes. me up. <laughs> disenfranchised toes. What is it? What is it when you're, you know, you're not, you're disenfranchised, right? Disenfranchised yeah. toes. Disenfranchised. Yes. Yeah. There you go. I'll if say you that get is, if you if you just say the disenfranchised. That's the English version of it. So there you go. I'm yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, but this is more fun. <laughs> it's more fun for me to try and say disenfranchistos. <gasps> did I do it? Those, I did it. I did it. <laughs> I'll never do it again, but I just did it. There we go. He does Drink it when he's the, thinking about drink it. Drink, motherfucker. <laughs> drink, motherfucker. Yeah. All right. Yeah, anytime I say it wrong, you guys got to drink. So It's like getting him to say GM instead of DM. All right. Anyhow. Um, anyway, moving sorry. on. <laughs> yeah, we never get off topic, do we? Oh no, never! <laughs> All right, so wow. been on the show once, about... and we've been off topic like five, six times. <laughs> All right, it's all right. Uh, oh, what good. we're talking about is the 28th transit arterial in mm-hmm. Calle del Prado. This is what they call the 28th in Prado. Uh, it's a single block, <sighs> pardon me, and it gets its ma- name from the two major thoroughfares that mm-hmm. form its western and southern borders. The block is on deep foothills of the Corde. Cordillera, yeah, Cordillera, Cordillera, um, Cordillera, Cordillera, Cordillera. Uh, Central Range, beneath mm-hmm. the Volcan Cayambe, uh, that can make up that makes up the base de Cayambe district. Mm-hmm. Uh, see page one fifty five. Blah blah blah. Uh, this is uh, a few kilometers uh, removed from the distant construction projects. The constant prescript. Uh, dis- construction projects mm-hmm. that are centered around Neo Broadway and 28th and Prado sits in the midst of endless warehouses that handle the shipments going up and down the beanstalk. Right. Yeah. And there's, there's three large buildings on this block. Two of them are a hundred story um, constructions. The other one is fresh horizons capital building, which is a proper 
Star Scraper. <laughs> no, not Skyscraper, because yeah. we're reaching for the stars now. Um, about 211 stories. That's huge. So, built by Watson, yeah. Watson, Watson, seven years ago, it says. Mm-hmm. It gives mm-hmm. us, so that gives you an idea, right? Of, you know, there's these three, and this, this building barely peeks out of the smoggy, <laughs> you know, Those clouds, clouds yeah. <laughs> you know, poking up above that, uh, you know. Right. Which is kind of a, and they call it, they call that star scraper the needle. Yeah. They say. So you could see it from the other districts, right? <clears throat> if, NBA. if you want good images of, let's say, these, some of these star scrapers, I've found and I've been collecting some off of Pinterest. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just high tech stuff. I, I've been saving them for, for my games, for the future games we'll play that I'll be is running. It Dragon Spawn? There's some if somebody awesome... wants to find you up there, if they find your board up there on Pinterest, is uh, Stuff in well, Dragon Spawn? They, no, I don't remember the name exactly. It's an old, older account, but Got I can uh, share it. But still, yeah. you can find a lot of images that can Sweet. inspire you with futuristic yeah. buildings. So mm-hmm. Awesome. Or okay. even slums and stuff, so mm-hmm. that you can see the, the tall buildings in the background and just, you know, the slums, that, similar to the cover of the Shadow of the Beanstalk movie. Gotcha. Book. <laughs> Now here's now here's an interesting thing. So on this for, so on this page, what was it? Um, one forty four. Um, the biggest employer at one point was this Transoul Shipping. Okay, um, mm-hmm. but they ended up investing heavily in the Android workforce. So now there's hundreds of buyer. And what this Trans Shipping um, does is all the pods that come through. You you're hearing this, and they say this in here. Um, you know, where the bean pods are packed, prepared. So you hear a lot of, like, anywhere on this block, you'll hear the, you know, hissing of these pods being being sent okay. out um, and whatever. But all these biroids are doing it. So this could be maybe a little hotbed for your, you know, human activists. labor activists, too. You know? Yo, maybe. And I picture rails coming in and out of the neighborhood with these bean pods on them. Because, I mean, how yeah. would you want to ship them? You wouldn't want to have these things on a truck. Well, I you think they do. To these... be honest with you, I think they do because the because that thoroughfare is right there. Right? The oh, main, yeah. The right. main this thing is right the there. trucks come in and out. Ground trucks. Mm-hmm. Ground a trucks. A never-ending mm-hmm. stream of ground trucks that pull off the transit arterial yep. to deliver loads of uh, waste and scrap to smelting facilities, as well as the shipping to and from right. the, uh, the East Brick is what they call the... Uh, the building that yep. they do the sorting that. Yep, on yeah. the east side of that. But, yep, and that's but what you can the, still. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Stefan. But you can still assume maybe that there are like these monorails that have bean pods on them. Oh, absolutely. Know, that sometimes come into the district, and you can have a heist similar to uh, Solo. <laughs> it's like okay, you have to have a. <laughs> you, oh, yeah. you have to break <laughs> into this uh, oh, pod. Oh yeah. And before it arrives at the lo- at the, uh, at the warehouse. <laughs> you know what I'm picturing? When you say that, you know what, Stefan? I think of The Dark Knight, the second Batman mm-hmm. movie, with yeah. them running up through the, what do they call that? The lower district or whatever. When they're yeah. coming through, they have, um, they, weren't they transporting um, Commissioner Gordon? That whole, that scene right there, that's, that's what good. I picture this district looking yeah. What do you think? Like the big trucks going? Oh, definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. you know, like any any big train. Um, mm-hmm. Or do you remember the movie? There was a movie. I remember. Oh, I forget the name now. But the girls in, a, in an asylum, and sometimes you have these little scenes of almost like a fantasy scene. And there's Sucker one of Punch. Us, Sucker Punch. There you oh, go. There's one scene yeah. where they're almost they're high tech girls mm-hmm. with geared out, cybered up, and they have to break into this train. Oh, there you, you know, go. That's the sci- kind of fantasy. He's like, yeah, one of them doesn't cool. make it. She gets killed, but she still has to yeah. you know, land on the thing, put a hole in the, in the ceiling, then grab and snatch <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> this is, you know, you're oh, in yeah. a time crunch. It's Very like, much boy. <laughs> you could have happen? several of these types mm-hmm. of heists. You could set up a whole game around pulling things off these pods after they've been packed and before they make it to the beanstalk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. All there right. There you go. So, we're, we're, yeah, we're sending you some ideas for your games, yeah. uh, listeners. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you now you owe us a favor. <laughs> <laughs> so, then they go into, on page 145, they go into life on the block, and they're talking yeah. about the various different levels. And first, we start with the penthouse level, <laughs> which is 
uh, you know, this is where the rich and famous all Your live. Yep, yep. Yeah, Eurysthes. And it's the uh, anything above the 180th story of the needle. Oh, yeah. It's all a penthouse view. Mm hmm. Now picture and they've, this. Got a, they've got a great picture here on 145 with this wristy gal sitting in her freaking mm-hmm. um, yeah, her kind of solar. Sense, yep. It's a sensi chair. chair. Yep. It's a sensi <laughs> chair is what it is. She's yeah. just, and and then coming up to deliver her pina colada is a freaking bioroid servant. Yeah, it's perfect. That's one hell of a bold drink, dude. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, you know. So picture it's... this. So you've got so above. So it says here above the 80th floor. Each of the needles floors are divided into four large penthouses, condo halves. So picture mm-hmm. the size of a freaking skyscraper. Mm-hmm. Each quadrant is a condo, and that's yeah. the thing. The 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 they say the. Um, the most valued commodity in yeah. this setting is room and Empty, space. Yeah, empty, empty, empty space. space. Yeah, and so that's if you're just, rich enough to have rooms that have a plant in one corner and a sculpture <laughs> in the other, you have made it. <laughs> exactly, and that. And just if that kind sculpture of, is made out of real wood, that's even better. <laughs> and, and dude, that, if like, I got rich in this setting, I just buy an apartment. And go look, I got space, dude. That's oh, right. that room over there. That's the room I store my teacup in. No, that's right. Not a teacup giraffe. There's a literal just a teacup. Just a teacup in there. <laughs> oh, and that room over there, that's just for extra air. That I, that I want to breathe. My, I store my air. That's <laughs> where, where I store my stray thoughts. I go in there and collect them every once in a yeah. while. <laughs> and then above, and then above, like the two hundred. The room so, where I change my mind. So then, it, so then it says like the floor two hundred and two hundred one have been have been turned into this enclosed park where people can mm-hmm. bring their kids up to and whatever. And then above that, there are the whole floors, which they kind of come up to like the needle, duh. Um, yeah. Just one single, the whole floor is just one penthouse suite, and they list people who live up there and whatever. But you could just get an idea of like, it's how rich these people are and what they kind of have. Well, exactly. Right? If you want to have an idea of how people would act like that, like you know, you've got some people who are, who are really rich in the um, Netflix series Altered Carbon. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a great, that's a good series. When the main character, yeah, when the main character is brought up to his employer, who the one who mm-hmm. un- unfreezes him and puts him in a new body, it's like, oh yeah, I did this for you, and now you have to do this for me. Yeah, there you go, <laughs> favors, man. So yeah, and yep, it's, just the and way they it. act, you get an idea of how you know they're they're so high and above everyone's mm-hmm. like, yeah, yeah, and yeah, you can't yeah, even go up to the top; you have to get off at the 178th floor. That's yeah. what I was just gonna say. Oh, yeah, oh, sorry. the elevators are all, you know it's two separate elevators. Your people down mm-hmm. on the ground aren't coming up into these levels. They have to mm-hmm. get they have to get past security to get on separate elevators to go up into these top top tip top levels. Yep. And it even goes so far as to name some of the people who are living in the top of this yeah. size or the star scraper. Yeah, there are some interesting personalities there. <laughs> yeah, I love the fact that they're just you know they're just names you know mm-hmm. Miss Savanista. The Connor family and the reclusive hermit on the 208th floor, known yep. only as Ware. <laughs> yeah, Ware. That's right. So, and Miss so maybe- Savanista is the one that throws all these parties, and yep. Mister Ware's never come to him, so she's a bit pissed. And you she's know, always, she yeah, always a bit miffed. Yeah, <laughs> she's a bit always miffed. a bit miffed. But yes, but tough, we just didn't you know? make that up, folks. That's in here. They go into that little bit of details on this, which is so you could use tough. this block and just you know make whatever you want with it. This Mister Ware. What does he do? Yeah, and what I decide. also like are these two freaking <laughs> these two freaking rent-a-cops from um, from Paladin Protection Services, right? It's the outfit yeah. from Base de Kayambe. <laughs> One is um, um, Kalina Lin, who's worked a day shift for years, so she kind of knows everybody. It's like, hey, yeah, we know yeah. Where you're going. Yeah. But then another guy who just came in on the night shift, Derek Ortega, just wants to fucking take somebody down. <laughs> can't wait for <laughs> somebody to fuck up. <laughs> It's Paul. It's Paul Blart. You know you. Yeah. <laughs> I've got this sign up pistol. Yeah. I'm just begging to be used. Come on. <laughs> yep. Give me an excuse. Yeah. 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 So, no, I mean, it's, it's great. So that's that's a good idea. So shall we talk about like the plaza level now, or was there anything else we want to talk about for these? Well, the seventy hundred and seventy ninth floor is given over to the private hopper garage for all the tenants. Of course. Right. So you can right. come so, if you're, no, you're rich enough to own one. 
Right. So your yeah. your top level people are going to land on the 179th floor. That's where they're going to fly in. They're going to take their personal elevator up to mm-hmm. their suites. Yeah, and uh, most people most the- people commute. You know, uh, yeah. you know, you know. Sometimes you need a place to put your BMW uh, Tempest 5000. You know. Uh, there you go. <laughs> most excellent. <laughs> No, what I, I kind of wanted to talk about the sidebar here up on the top of page 146 the where it talks presence? about the police presence. Oh, yeah. yeah, Go ahead, go into that, man. Yeah. yeah, like most blocks, 28th and Prado has its own NAPD sub-precinct. So you have the, 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 the cops in this area are familiar with the people. Mm-hmm. Um, located on the top floor of East Brick, the station has two rooftop charging pads for patrolling police hoppers and a silo for cam drones. So you've got this huge silo on top of here yeah, that dude. cam drones are just constantly flying out of and they're marked with NAPD right on the side yeah. I mean nice. that just gives you this visual of, your, of this you've got hoppers flying all over the city and you've got these cam drones buzzing every which direction yeah and, neat and, image yeah neat image um, but, but they don't uh, all work but they, a lot of them are still old and broken down and some well, silo seems to be mostly empty <laughs> So that below the rooftop, so below the rooftop pads, the station consists of two cramped offices and a storage locker for police gear. The only full-time staff is the virtual AI receptionist named Salvador, who logs misdemeanor violations spotted by the drones and takes mm-hmm. complaints filed by the locals. And I think that's so. <laughs> so you got to deal with the AI. That's yeah. great. isn't Salvador Dali? Is he the guy that did the melting? Melting watches or cut off his own ear? Yeah, melting. No, he, that that was Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Uh, oh, sorry, okay. he did the melting clocks and the tall yeah. elephants with long skinny legs. Yes, awesome. So maybe a couple of those pictures are in the room. Oh yeah, Salvador I can see here. like right? like Salvador being a like a projected holographic personality yeah. that if you go yeah. into the office to talk to, and on the wall behind him yeah. are a couple of melting uh, clocks or whatever. The melting <laughs> clocks, you know, just yes, yeah, yeah, it is I, Salvador. Well, how can I help you today? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he's got the same voice. Me. He talks like this all the time. Oh, no, no. <laughs> you you otherwise, you park illegally between three and five today. Yes. <laughs> So it says, otherwise, the only officers that are visiting the station are patrol officers taking a break, stacking up on restraints, or actively investigating a crime on the block. So Mm -hmm. you don't have cops hanging out in your police station. They are living out of their hoppers, these cops. And uh, so the only direct contact most locals have with an NAP with the NAPD is a, uh, are those who know Corporal Amanda Tasker, who lives on the 105th floor of East Brick with her husband Eric and son Travis. So it goes into detail, yeah, dude. dialing it down to th- th- these people. So you could just throw these people in, yep. you know. Yeah. To and I love that. So that was why I wanted to bring That's that great. up. Yeah, they even describe a bit of uh, her husband mm-hmm. saying he works at a certain place, and uh, you know you can you can maybe influence him to help, maybe influence her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you know, again, working the favor system into it. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Offer to pay for his groceries rather than logging a complaint with Salvador. Oh, <laughs> Tired like, of talking on. to that AI? Please, can I talk to your wife? <laughs> yeah, exactly. This car has been parked in front of my business for f- five weeks. Can you finally get it towed? <laughs> exactly. That's cool. Right. That's pretty cool. Yes. So, Chris, you wanted to talk about the plaza floors. Go ahead. Oh, sure. Well, yeah, I just – yeah, um, that's next here. Um, so they call the plaza floors, which is based – they call it – so picture this. So between the Needles penthouses and the collection of – Slide walks. Yes, I said slide walks, not sidewalks. So that kind of gives an image, right? And rain shields. <laughs> you know, I, mean, <laughs> I like slide walks, man. Yeah, dude, I don't yeah, have to yeah. walk in the airport. Just slide, right? <laughs> um, anyways, um, that they're girdling each building around the 40th story. I mean, just picture that. Just yeah. the word girdles each building. Just kind of <laughs> gives an image of what it looks like. I like Those the fact you that you didn't. didn't I like the fact that you didn't notice this about the picture originally when we talked about this. When yes. we did the and you didn't the I cover did. of the book and now the picture on page one forty seven that gives you an idea of what that plaza level looks mm-hmm. like. Chris never noticed the huge canyon I that know. goes further down. <laughs> I thought that was a fucking road there, but now I'm so then when I looked at this picture I told Tony, I'm like, dude. 
they're like up in up in the pl- this is the plaza level, man. <laughs> yeah. And there's my cocktails and greens. Part of the plaza, but still a plaza. And there's my cocktails oh. and greens right there. Yep. Aruba. <laughs> Jeremy. Yeah, uh, and for those of you who are l- actually listening to the podcast and not actually viewing video, I was just going back and forth on my rolling chair, <laughs> pretending I'm a th- on a sidewalk or a slide. You mean walk. a slide walk? There you go. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and you know what? You know, hey, I don't know what it is with FFG and Star Wars, but man, there are no freaking rails. Look yeah. at that guy. Look oh, in this picture, one forty-seven. Just, rails are just, for just wussies. Sitting on, on the right hand side, on the right hand side, just sitting it's there. Natural selection. If you're too stupid to stay away from the edge, <laughs> this then you deserve sitting, to die. This dude's sitting right over the edge. He's got his feet right over the edge. Fear of heights isn't a thing in these games. No. Oh man, I would not do well. The government would not does not do well. Oh, the government has more important things to, to worry about than freaking rails. <laughs> You don't, exactly. We don't want to keep you. That's because the game doesn't want to keep you on rails. They want to <laughs> yeah. be open. That's why. <laughs> yeah. So they so they go into. Um, there's something in here that says even the middle class can afford to have most of their needs delivered via drone. Mm-hmm. So you have these cams, drones. You have all these. Yeah, delivery drones. Package delivery drones and stuff coming over the place, coming all over the place too. So, um, but you have like your bodegas, snack food vendors, a mega buy outlet, home furnishings, Cuddles. and all of your bars and whatever here. That's just mm-hmm. a great picture on page one forty-seven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Even the hollow shark. I wonder what they sell there. <laughs> Maybe they're showing shark fin jo- soup, may, may, or maybe, or maybe they're, or maybe that's a movie theater and they're showing like Jaws, what, twelve? Jaws festival, yeah, the Jaws festival. <laughs> the Jaws festival. All Jaws, all the time. That's right. <laughs> they're up to Jaws twenty four. There you go. Yeah, something like that. The Jaws quote along festival. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, Jaws, it just goes. Jaws into- has become sentient and has, is a musical version of. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> All right, so yeah, continuing. <laughs> yeah, well, so here, so here's a little detail here. So um, Nenfa Repair is a consumer electronics retail repair shop about four f- floors above the main plaza level, um, looking out over the um, 28th and Parado uh, um, intersection L Square. Whatever. So mm-hmm. the owner, Chief Tech, um, reinforced the balcony supports. That's where a bunch of like hopper bikes are sit there, and his teenage employees store their bikes there, souping up and mm-hmm. letting your letting your kids, you know, just work on their bikes in this yeah. little corner of this plaza, you know. Which yeah. I don't know. I just thought it was interesting. So you could- you can come over and say, like, I need some guy with a fast hopper bike uh, yeah. to deliver a message or something, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, then oh, you and I just get, thought like, of something, just as a sidebar, another audible. Imagine if House Byroid had developed a Byroid shark. <laughs> oh. All right, they have it. Yeah, all right, listeners, discuss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when we start talking about the Mana District or whatever that one is right on the coast. Manta, yeah, the Manta District. <laughs> cool. Right. All right. Sorry. Yeah, one of the things I really liked, uh, I like the, uh, the little entry here. The eastern L square of 28th and Prado's plaza level includes an AI monitored playground yeah. that's been kept in moderately good repair with an attached park where Habs few, where the Habs few dozen dogs all make their rounds. The park mm-hmm. is nearly big enough for dogs to get proper exercise, but there's not really anywhere else to take your animals since East Brick and West Brick's roofs are occupied with hopper pads. Yep. <laughs> That's cool. So the playground is one of the few places where on plaza level that local parents mm-hmm. feel safe taking their kids, largely because a lieutenant <laughs> for Los Gatos Negros, Vincent Crazy Eyes Chambers, That's right. regularly brings his daughter Cynthia and her pit bull, Princess Diamond, <laughs> there to play. <laughs> like Princess you do. Diamond. That's awesome. The playground hasn't had any violent crime in months <laughs> since he's been bringing his daughter there. That is Google. great. Because Vincent Crazy Eyes Chambers brings his daughter there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and his dog, Princess Bond Diamond. Because her of dog. Her pitbull. Her dog. That's yeah. her pitbull. I'm just yeah. saying. You know, maybe Cynthia's like 
five years old. Mm-hmm. And his pit bull is, <laughs> is like... Yep. Just looms over her, just protective, very exactly. protective. Exactly. She rides and, him and in. Play, and plays around with a little chihuahua named Hulk. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yeah, because the smaller the dog, the nastier the name. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Because Princess Diamond is just a a little princess. Well, yeah. But those are the kind of details you want to weave into your own blocks. If you're, you know, if you're making your own block somewhere else, little details like that, you know, those are the kind of things where, you know, a great way to spend advantage is to find out that little detail. You know, yeah. and you happen to make a streetwise check, and hey, you know. You're you're looking for you know let's say you're looking for a meeting with a Los Gatos uh, yeah. gang, and now you know that Vincent and his daughter mm-hmm. frequent this park with yeah. their dog, yep. and now maybe you can make a you know take borrow somebody's dog and take yeah. their your dog <laughs> the dog in there and and make an acquaintance with the guy yeah, and maybe I'm say sure. hey I'd like to discuss business with you at some other time you know can That's we do that you can. Totally use that as an, a way yeah, to spend it. advantage in a streetwise check or something. And, exactly. and even if the GM hasn't fleshed out all the NPCs, when you spend one of those story points, create you know play as a player, create one of those little NPCs. Oh yeah, yeah, but I know someone. Flip a story point that you know his dog comes to this park often, and or right. you know, frequents this little noodle place, and mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> he's really chummy with the uh, the owner. So <laughs> I, I use the example of. Let's go with uh, Blade Runner. You've mm-hmm. got Deckard. Deckard always me- goes to the same damn place to eat noodles. Mm-hmm. The guy knows him, you know. Yeah. So when somebody's looking for Deckard, they go right to that place and look for him. Yep, because he's going to be there eventually. And he's well, going to be it. there eventually. So yeah, even it, if he's not there for a while, he'll leave a message with the noodle ramen, you know, owner, and like, yeah, I'll give, give him a message. <laughs> Yep. People are creatures of habit, and the mm-hmm. habits of your NPCs, even if it's a small one, like yep. a guy taking his dog for a walk, these are habits that you can pluck on for mm-hmm. little uh, story ideas, story oh, yeah. threads with your players and your as GMs. So, yep. yeah, cool yep. stuff. All right, so then we move on to the into undercity. the undercity. The undercity, yeah, and this is oh. this is what this is pretty cool too. There's an eight lane, so the transit arterial is an eight lane highway mm-hmm. enclosed by walls of plastic crete and topped by steel mesh. There was a neat little sidebar up here, based actually oh. a couple pages back called Sights and Sounds. Read that. That mm. really evokes like what everybody's hearing. You know the um, yeah. one one little thing is like far below the plaza level. The sky vanishes entirely. Most of the street lights have long since burnt out. Have been replaced here. The lights dim, fading. Um, harsh light flashes from the traffic along the 28th. That's mm-hmm. what you're kind of seeing, you know. Um, right. And there's also that I. And then there's also that image of the um, just below plaza level. The signs grow smaller and numerous, um, more numerous, and they, you know that omnipresent, you know, neon glow. They do a better; mm-hmm. those signs do a better job of lighting the yeah. houses than <laughs> the actual lights do, than the street right. lamps do. So that's kind of a neat. That sorry, I just wanted to throw that in there. No, nope, that's fine. fine. So yeah, that and then it goes, neat. it goes into, um, you know, how what the atmosphere is, like Chris is saying, uh, mm-hmm. and then you know you've got your piled up waste everywhere mm-hmm. down below yep. in the undercity. Nobody's down here cleaning up. Up nope. above, you may have uh, various bioroids cleaning things up, but yeah, down gold. here, nobody cares. And so you end up with these really cool, you know, this garbage infested. This is mm-hmm. your. This is what you see as your dystopian yeah. future when you think yeah. of, um, you know, when you think of cyberpunk type culture and you talk about it. This is what Slums. you're thinking. Yeah, yeah these they call this. They call this place. They call a place down there called Sump Town. That's where yeah. like a bunch of sand shanties are built up next to these support pillars that are supporting the the the, the highway and whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And Sump Town, I think, is where all these you know, where all that trash and you know, yeah. whatever. Great example. Mm-hmm. Great example of a culture in an area like this in a yeah. in a, in a film or in a comic book series is Spawn. 
If you think mm-hmm. about the uh, Spawn yes. comics mm-hmm. or the Spawn mm-hmm. animated series that was on HBO, how you had this culture of vagrants that mm-hmm. call this land their territory. Mm-hmm. This is a prime example of you can look at that and you can just port that right into this mm-hmm. you know section of the Undercity. Yep. So I'm. It, yeah. That's what it invo- evoked in my mind was that was the first thing I had. And as a GM, thought. don't don't forget to describe also like there's always traffic as well. People are milling about. This is over you know at least a billion people you know yeah. registered or not. Mm-hmm. There's hoppers, trucks, whether they're automatically driven trucks. Yep. Uh, and that whole, and that whole idea of not having any personal space almost right. No. It's exactly. fairly in crowded and stuff in places. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it. Or it's completely deserted, and you don't know what's going to come out at you. If you because it's, yeah, you, yep. know, you might have rats, you might have cyber rats, mm-hmm. you might Ooh. have, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this would be a great place to run across the uh, cyber rat swarms that they had uh, in one of the um, as one of the uh, NPCs or mm-hmm. as the adversaries that Adversary? you would find in the back in the back of the book. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Yeah, yeah so there's so much flavor. In just these, what are we talking? We're only talking like, what, six or seven pages? Yeah. I mean, this really gives you a good idea of um, the different levels. Mm -hmm. The penthouse level, the plaza level, the undercity level. You have those if you want to create your own block. You know, that's those are the things you want to think about, right? Well, Mm -hmm. you've got your, you've got your, as a fantasy analogy, your noble quarters, your merchant quarters, and... Your slums, your yeah. docks, your yeah, whatever. Yeah, there you go. Perfect, oh. perfect. Yeah. yeah. If you're going to create a locale for your players to be bouncing in and out of regularly, you could totally put your campaign in a place like this and just yeah. deal with stuff on the small level. Or if you want to move about the city, having these little small um, enclaves, d- enclaves pockets that people, yeah. pockets of civilization, whatever you want to call it, where yeah. people... Or where your players are dropped into having an idea of what each level looks like, and then making each one your own well, is yeah. Uh, yeah just and each district has its own different flavors. Like you think, like Nihon guy, Nihon, Nihon guy yep. has more of a Japanese flavor. So if you right, want yep. something like that, fine. You want the more Miami almost back vibe. Manta might be mm-hmm. might be cool. Yep, there you go, like South uh, Beach, right? That's it. Yep. The more dark gray stuff, you know, uh, industrial. The, the Rabaskara. Rabaskara, <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. And then you want to deal with a mix of stuff, you know, Shaka, Shakana district, you know, uh, with, with, the, with the space elevator right there in front of your face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of smuggling opportunities there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Right on. There's lots of stuff mm-hmm. here and there. I've been reading through the book myself. I'm still in the different districts. I think I'm past Laguna of Laguna. Yeah. I forget the name, but still, there's so many of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I'm in the Quindy district. Cool. Gotcha. Now, there's a so, lot. But still, there's so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, this chapter is just, there's so much here. <clears throat> it really yeah. is. Yeah, Even if you want to get. A- Sorry, go ahead. No, if you want to get a feel for what it's like to live in this city, this is what you want to read. This chap, mm-hmm. and I, I said earlier it was 144 through 159. Actually, that's an error. It's 144 through 149. Yeah. Uh, it all it kind of wraps up there as you talk about the block culture in that sidebar down on mm-hmm. uh, page 149. But that pretty much wraps up setting the tone, folks. Yeah. yeah. I know we kind of rambled there for a bit, but. There's a reason for it. <laughs> There's a lot of information yeah. in it here, everybody. Yeah. yeah, and now there are three of us, so <laughs> a lot of ideas are bouncing all over the place. <laughs> That's right. See, there you go. You guys just got you guys guys just got fifty percent more ideas. There we go. Coming from us now, right? Yep. That's right. Cool. So, Fabulous sh- ideas. Let's get on with advantageous threats, gentlemen. Now we are at part three about a section called, in French, 
Ah, les menaces avantageuses, or the advantageous threat. <laughs> I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that. <laughs> there you go. Where uh, we each take turns and set up a small scenario uh, with certain characters and work through it, the, the die roll and why we're going through it, and try to, uh, to fuck the other guy up who's setting up the situation. <laughs> To put it very bluntly, sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, well I, said. Can, well said. Can I you say want to fuck go first? On this show? Can I say fuck on this? Uh... <laughs> you as many times can. as you want. You okay, absolutely fuck can, it. motherfucker. <laughs> All right. So let's do this, fucker. Well, go ahead, <laughs> Stefan. You know what? Why don't you kick it off then? Perfect. Who'd you got here, bud? Let's go with the person who's the oldest. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. I've got my Realm of Tiranoth character, Kiar White Shadow who is a cat folk uh, scout. In this little particular scenario, he's split from the party, which, you know, is always a good idea, right? Absolutely. Of course. And uh, he's we been charged tra- as GMs well, and of DMs. <laughs> and DMs, too. Mm-hmm. So he's been tracking his infected brother. You know, he comes from a litter of five. So uh, mm-hmm. his, his infected brother, Ruzal, uh, who's been infected by some kind of demonic, contagious curse or possession. He's not sure which. Okay. And then he's heading as fast as he can towards Kiar's village. And his this village is in a secret location. That's what protects it. No one knows about it. That's why he split from the party, because he doesn't want his friends to know about it. Uh, gotcha. So he's been running through the forest trying to catch up and get ahead of his own brother. Okay. To set up kind of ambush slash trap because of course you know since it's his brother he doesn't want to kill him yeah and his friend uh the uh the shaman that tony uh runs i forget his name uh <laughs> he's the one who came up with this kind of potion to help maybe the, the curse mm. to reverse it so he's hoping uh to administer it but he has to at least immobilize him first gotcha so he's been running, and he managed to get ahead, but he doesn't have much time to set up his ambush. Okay. So the situation, he has to use his survival skill okay. to set up that ambush. He he, man, he knows where his, his brother is going to be coming from in the direction. Okay. So this will be survival with, uh, he's gone some experience over the, uh, the years, so he's got three yellow, one green in survival. Okay. Versus, of course, his brother's perception to see if he spots it in time or not, okay. which is two red and two purple. Ooh. All right. So he, he's been running a long time, so he's a little tired. So the so jam maybe a little exhausted. That's and it. He so, have maybe time. so maybe two boost dice for that, or uh, two, two setback dice for that? Two, two setback dice, yeah. Okay. Would, you know, would be okay. Oh, look at this. And he put in here, he knows the, your boost die. <laughs> He even wrote oh. down the boost die there. Boost die <laughs> well, that's whore. It because I'm I'm the boost die whore. You yeah, know? you are. I would, I would I would ask the GM. Well, I know the forest pretty well since you grew up there. Would I get a boost die? And the GM probably would say yes. Well, since this is near your secret grove, I would say sure. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Me Absolutely. Too. So that would be a pretty good dice pool, and he's got the knack for its survival. Oh, so he gets Hence, to get rid of those two setback. Exactly. Well, so we done, remove sir. them. All right. There we go. No other feats or talents, I mean, uh, would affect. Uh, is it um, what time of day is it? Has uh, it been raining? Is, is it foggy? Is it is it raining? I don't know. It could be. It could be. You could flip a story point to say yes, it has rained. And <laughs> well, I mean, well, we could say you know what we yeah, could say that it has difficult. rain. There's a bit of fog, so maybe mm-hmm. you get a boost out of this because it, it's All not right. a it's not a setback die because okay. it's actually his perception, right? It's right. actually it okay. actually the environment is actually helping you in this case. All right, so we got two. They didn't even have to ask for another boost day. Gave you one. All right, so that would be good enough. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I would like to flip a story point here. Flip a story point because right. you know what? Maybe this ambush trap, whatever it is, could maybe backfire. Well, that's it. I it would say important. the reason. If I was the GM, the reason I would say the. Um, the uh, for flipping the story point is that this contagious demonic curse mm. is actually giving him extrasensory powers. Ooh, well, well done, I sir. did think of, I did think about that because his brother is was always the brainy type, 
you know, he, he studied more of the arcane stuff. That's why he got into trouble, you know, studying into the demonic stuff, which then affected him. Awesome. But he's, for some reason, he's faster and his senses were boosted. So that would make cool. sense. All right. Mm-hmm. And I would, I would have flipped the story point two, so making it four, four yellow, because it's a family member. He's okay. desperate to there try and go. save him. And his family, which is back home. Okay. Very well. All right. So there we go. That's a nice big so pool. We've got a nice, yeah, a nice big pool. So let's go. So, ooh, okay, so we got a nice mix. Two failures there. Those cancel the two successes there. So there we go. Ooh, we got a despair. Yeah! All right! <laughs> Welcome but to we the show, Stephen! But we, ha- but we have a triumph as well. Of course we do. <laughs> and then, after canceling everything, uh, this one, I... All my yet, all, gosh, I know what it is. No, no, actually, all my uh, my three yet remaining yellow dice are, are all three successes and advantage, and my one purple that's left has a, a failure. So I would flip one of those yellows to just one success, canceling uh, no uh, an advantage. Right. Leaving me with two successes and three advantages, and then one th- triumph and a despair. Damn. Well, so he manages, yeah. So he manages to set his trap in time. Okay. Uh, with some advantage, is that yeah, his brother will not be noticing it in time to do anything. It's so really well. His advantage spring. now. Did this trap? Was it more of a pit trap, or was it like a like a dead man's well, trap? Is he caught in a net, or what? No, kind that's of, it. He didn't. He didn't have time to dig a dig a hole, but okay. at least to lay lay some kind of netting. Okay, maybe it's one of those like boom, flips him up in the air, and now he's you, yeah. he's hanging. Or, so not only did he did you succeed in like stopping him, he's actually trapped. Yeah, <clears throat> and he's kind of immobilized a little bit for at least a short time. That would maybe. be the three advantage. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and with the triumph, maybe he would be tr- Kiara would be able to move fast enough to be able to administer the. The potion to Excellent. try to reverse his his uh, and it's and it and it is the the proper kind of potion. He wasn't sure it was an actual possession or an actual mystical curse. Okay. So actually, he guessed right. <laughs> I have so an idea it, for the despair. Yeah, and then we go for the despair. <laughs> what's your despair idea? Because I'm wondering. I have an idea too, and I'm we're just going to see if we're on, we have the yeah, same brain. It can only be one or the other, not two. Because <laughs> only have one despair. <laughs> My idea for the despair would be that you didn't see that along the way he was in contact with a pack of wolves that is now infected with the demonic curse and will continue on to the village. Oh, that's not bad. It's similar to what I was thinking. I was thinking maybe if it was a possession that your character is now kind of possessed. But I like Tony's better. I like Tony's better. (laughs) Or yeah, or he could have been infected with a slow. So he has to race back to his friend Gorgo. Yeah. I think was the name of the thing. As to Gorgo to, Rage Mantle. Yeah, Gorgo. to go back. Gorgo. That would be another you know part of the story too. But either way, it would be awesome. Gorgo. <laughs> I could see eventually. You know, he's hunting down those those wolves. This time, it's like I don't care if I if they're alive or. I don't have to capture these wolves. I can shoot them, and he, he's a paragon <laughs> nice. of archery. So, okay, I'm going to take these down guys. <laughs> nice. But anyway. I like there sending you. a pack of demonic wolves into a small yep. village, though. That sounds yep. like fun. It sure <laughs> does. Fun. <laughs> it, sounds like are, a great, it sounds like a great dick GM thing to do. Woo, oh. go, Tony. What? Yeah, but, <laughs> but, with, but with Kiara, you know, being the, his, his incredible archer, he just like, manages to pick them off one at a time there we go maybe if maybe a few villagers fall but you know he tries to save as many as he can <laughs> there we go maybe that's right. another advantageous threat maybe we'll know we'll never right. know <laughs> hey tony do you want to go next or you want me to go ahead man all right so i had an idea so this idea actually came from i saw on pinterest a freaking picture and i should have go. shared it with you guys before i did it is, I mean, literally, there is this Viking playing the bagpipes on a freaking Viking longboat in the middle of a damn, <laughs> in a damn storm. And Excellent. my Ice Reaver Scald, named Bjorn Thunderpipes, in the Primeval Thule setting, needs to make a verse magic action check to augment the rowers in the longboat. 
while in the middle of this storm. So he tied himself off to the mast for support. He's, you know, just playing. Um, he has a very nice presence of four. Two ranks in verse. And he's using his great-grandfather's pipes, allowing him to add additional targets for free. So that's the an implement, magical implement, gotcha. if you will. Mm-hmm. The, and then, um, so he needs to increase the range of the check of verse. Mm-hmm. So it'll be, it'll, it starts off with two yellow, two green, and three purple dice for the verse check. All right. So that's what we're doing. And we're... All right. In the water. Stefan, would you like to take the a primary GM role here? Oh, sure. I'll take the primary GM. So, uh, of course, as a GM, I would definitely flip a story point and flip one of those purples to red because yep. you're, on a, you're on a boat. It's <laughs> it's rocking I'm all over the boat. place I'm on, I'm on, on the high seas. <laughs> so... <laughs> And a bagpipe requires two hands, last time I checked. <laughs> so that's, hence, that's why he tied himself off. <laughs> but still, did he tie himself off properly? That's another matter. I don't know. Look so. at the picture. Sure to hell looks like no. he did. <laughs> I'll find the picture and send it to you guys. <laughs> All right. Well, I, uh, I, think, uh, I think also there's wind, there's mm-hmm. rain, yeah. and this thunder, and you're trying to shout over that. I think that would probably end up being at least two setback dice. Got it. Yeah. But because you are tied to the mast, I suppose I would let you have a boost die. A boost, yay! <laughs> well, you're, you're way too nice. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually going to flip a story point as well because I'm playing fucking bagpipes in the middle of a yeah. storm. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> is, is there a Sasquatch playing the drums behind you? Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All right. And so that's three yellow of shield, green. A couple of shield maidens are shining some light out on you. <laughs> dramatic well, way. They're my backup dancers. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so three yellow, a green, a blue, one red, two purple, two black. Man, that's very cool. It's Bjorn and the Valkyrie. And I'm rolling on the Android book, so we'll see how good this does. Holy oh. Threatmeister. Uh oh. Triumphant Threatmeister here, though. Okay. Though. The section is called Advantageous Threat. I know. <laughs> Holy crap. Not Triumphant Threat. Oh, you know what? Oh, this is great. Two successes and a triumph. <laughs> there you go. No threat left over? No threat left Nothing. over. Nothing. Totally, That's boring. It totally canceled itself out. No threat. All right. Three threat canceled by three advantage. Two successes and a triumph. What would you like to do with said triumph? Yeah. Well, I would like to inspire. Well, actually, what happens is they are truly inspired because I am backlit by a freaking um, lightning bolt (laughs) from Thor himself or whatever. Yeah. Right at the right moment, they're like, oh, and so it kind of affects all of them, and their their augment. So the augment power gives them like an extra, what is it? Extra die makes their yeah, check it'll last better, longer, so. last even longer. Maybe it'll last even longer <laughs> yeah. or something like that. But yeah, dude. Perhaps each of them could recover two strain. Mm. There you go. Yeah, yeah. They they recover some strain and continue to row. Yes. Very nice. As we get closer to a ship, because we're gonna. Take over, take it over. Yeah, or maybe they get a boost die when they finally get along the ship to attack. See, there he is, boost die. There he is, boost die. <laughs> <Nice. laughs> Great. All right, Tony, what do you got, buddy? All right, my character Hemlock Jones, Kung Fu PI in a '70s crime <laughs> game, is uh, he's going to try and string along Ooh. using the favor system. Yep. String along, Detective Riggs, a cop that owes him a major favor. Oh, okay. Uh, he's trying to get a little inside info on a new detective that has crossed paths with Hemlock's own case mm-hmm. of the missing girl, May Lee Wong. So this is a big favor, or is it a regular favor you're wanting a smaller favor I just wanted to for. let slip a little bit of, you know, something about the new detective that's Got taken it. the case that, that's kind of crossed paths with me. You know, I'm okay. friends with Riggs, and okay. Riggs owes me big time. 
But this is just a little thing I want from him. So I'm trying to string him along and not right. cash in my major favor. I want to save that for, oh, I don't know, in case I get arrested at a scene of a crime later or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> All right. It wasn't me. It was the one-eyed man. <laughs> <laughs> so in this case, it's uh, according to uh, Shadow of the Beanstalk, page 81. It's a coercion versus discipline check. Okay. So it's my coercion, which is two yellow and a green, mm-hmm. versus a, and I looked up a standard NAPD police detective has a two purple discipline. All right. Sounds so. good to me. Well, let's see here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Riggs, and I go, Riggs and I go way back. You do uh, go way back. I've, I've had. I've had multiple favors with this guy over the course of the campaign, so I would say, uh, Mr. GM, hey, could I get a boost die? <laughs> sure. Hey, Chris, you're I'm, lo- I'm learning you from a friend. Yeah, you yeah. are. <laughs> yeah, you could get a boost die. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to think here. Um, but, but I would say maybe I have to flip a story point to uh, make the discipline check maybe a little higher. Wow. Hemlock has been not Hemlock's, but uh, Riggs has been on a hard time, so he's he's a little stressed out. He's not, you know, sure he can help out uh, in this case. You know, he's got lots of stuff on his plate as a well, as a te- detective for the NEPD, so pressure from high above. Okay. Well, I think really knowing this detective, eh? You know what? I'm not gonna upgrade it myself. I'm not gonna flip. I'm gonna save it in case I need it. There you go. All right. All right. Yeah, I think that I think that sounds good. Maybe right. maybe maybe Riggs is a little a little more reluctant to give you information on this new detective because this detective might be a superior son, like maybe a legacy. You know what I mean? So okay. maybe a boost die. A setback? You mean? Sorry, setback. Yeah. Yeah. Setback. <laughs> okay. All right. Rolling them up. All right. First things first. I rolled a triumph. Dang. Yay! Alan has rolled a triumph tonight. That's I cool. rolled absolutely no failures, just four threat and three advantage. So Aww. grand total, I end up with three successes, one threat, and a triumph. Nice. All right, so you managed to get some information off of your uh, off the detective. Yeah. Yep. I have a suggestion. About the threat. What do you think? Uh-huh. Sure. He required me to buy him an expensive lunch. There you so go. That's cool. Take you know, take twenty credits out of my pocket. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, wine and dining. some noodles. <laughs> <laughs> some expensive noodles. Yeah, and for my triumph. Yeah. Um, he gives me a. Not only does he give me a little bit of information on the detective, but he's heard some scuttlebutt around the the police precinct yeah. and he now has oh, given cool. me a clue on where I can go look for May Lee Wong. Yes. Yeah. That was yeah, I was gonna I was thinking of that too. That's good. Yeah, and maybe that uh this new detective may have some kind of links, you know, that he doesn't want known that maybe he has some links to the Yakuza or just rumors, but you know, he might this might be a dirty detective. Maybe. Ooh, maybe. Maybe yeah. I, I, I like I like the um I like the uh, g- getting a clue for a triumph on something like that. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I like that. Very cool. And that and that and I still I and still, still owes breaks, he still, still owes, owes me a major favor. So it, I if I go to that scene and I end up pissing off this new detective, yeah, and uh, <laughs> and I end up getting arrested uh, because I'm invading his crime scene. You know, maybe or Riggs will bail maybe, you out or whatever. Maybe Riggs will talk him into not arresting me or dropping yeah. the charges. Nice. That's perfect, dude. I like that, man. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that was good. All right. That was good. Cool. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is advantageous threats. Three times the joy. Three times the That's right. Which means that means we're going home. We want to go home. Put the tape in the bed. Yep, we have to. All right. All right. All right, everybody. That is our show tonight. And I would like to give a shout out to the Role Players Imaginarium by Patrick Shadow Dad Greenlaw. Um,. It's an, uh, it's an imaginarium, a repository of pontification, GM advice, and rules conversion for the Savage World system. 
Now, go on there, read about how he got the name Shadow Dad. Mm, pretty cool. Um, mm. what, I re- what I really liked is his Deathlands stuff. I don't know if you guys have ever, by, what is it, James Axler wrote that. Mm-hmm. I read like a couple of books on it. It's basically post-apocalyptic stuff that, hap- that they okay. wrote in the 80s, you know, the big... You know, like Cold War time frame, you know, when things were going to, okay. when all, all that um, post apocalyptic stuff came out. He created a lot of neat stuff for Deadlands and that, but he's got all kinds of stuff on there. Specifically for Savage, the Savage World system at right. the Role Players Imaginarium dot blog out there. Yeah, right. cool. It's a great blog. Give it a read. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yep. All right. You got any reminders for us, Stefan? Yep, that's it. Uh, So we talked about it at the beginning of the show, so go check out NivCon 3, uh, Nerds International Virtual Con, (laughs) March 30th and 31st, and even there's a little, like, meet and greet on Friday the 29th on Discord, so you can get the link to to chat and whoever's in there, you know, you can get to talk and uh, get some ideas or whatever. Sign up, play, run some games. Yeah. Yep. And then remember, Wise Guys Kickstarter, Tuesday, March 26th, a couple days yep. from now. Or maybe yeah, tomorrow, it. if this is Monday and you're listening to it. Depending on you know, you're listening to it. Yeah, TikTok, TikTok, go, go, go. <laughs> so, so, Tony, right. do we have some contact info for us? Yes, I do. It's You can contact us via email, all three of us now, at yes. findingthenarrativepodcast at gmail.com. You can get a hold of me, Finding the Narrative, on Facebook. Um you know, I'm, I'm sure Stefan hovers there too every once in a while. He he mm-hmm. likes my posts now and again, so he'll see whatever you send uh, if you well, post up you, there. If you can find him, Tony, you can probably find me as, as one of his friends. So, uh, <laughs> or I'm on I'm on MeWe as Stefan Dragonspawn. Yep, yep. We're all there. Uh, mm-hmm. Finding the narrative is there, and also so is Nerds International. We all have our own little groups. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can. Tell your friends about us and your family. Listen to us at Finding the Narrative on Podbean, iTunes, YouTube, and on Google Play. This is Tony saying, keep rolling them bones. And this is Stefan saying, don't forget to ask for a boost die. <laughs> and this is Chris remem- reminding you to remember the rule of cool and just have fun, everybody. Thanks for joining us, Stefan. You rock, buddy. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Finding the Narrative, a Genesis RPG podcast, is not affiliated with or endorsed by any companies mentioned in this show. Any of the products mentioned on our show or appear on our website are the property and copyright of their respected owners. All items are used under fair use and educational and review purposes. All other items are the intellectual property of Finding the Narrative, a Genesis RPG podcast. Copyright 2019. All rights reserved.